Hello to all my friends out there. Hi, you guys. Okay, I'm still brainstorming. And so now I'm brainstorming on my 10 cheapest ways to reduce expenses. And these are really, really cheap. Uh, if things get really, really crappy, you've got to reduce your expenses down to nothing. And the second part is what to do if you are evicted. God forbid. Um, I've been I've been ejected from my home twice, so I know what it's like. And, and both times I was hysterical. Okay, ten things to do to really uh, decrease your expenses. And once you know you kind of start doing those, is these it's not so bad. One. Turn off the breaker switch, except for the refrigerator. If you can barely pay your utilities, that will work. I don't uh, suggest that in, in extreme cold, because that can really, really kill you. Um, in, in extreme heat, it is possible. I could sleep out on my balcony. Uh, I don't like to go out there that much because of the low ledge. So that's why I haven't done many um, videos out there. Um, I was an EMT and a nursing student, and so I am well aware of freak accidents. So number one, turn off the breaker switch except for the refrigerator. Or just uh, in one room, just heat or cool one room and stay in there. Number two, don't go anywhere. If you don't go anywhere, you can't spend any money. But you have to be careful because you could drive up your uh, utilities high by doing that. Okay, this is a this is real cheap. Wash clothes in the bathtub, big loads. So you would put all your dirty clothes in the bathtub, and you would put detergent in there, and you would soak them, and you would scrub any of the really dirty parts, and then you would drain out all the water and squeeze all the water out of the, the and you could use a plunger and uh, you could use a washboard but let's hope your clothes are not that dirty you can wash your clothes one day and they should be ready by the next or the day after that's a better strategy but you can put all your clothes in the tub you you squeeze them out and then you fill the bathtub with water and let them soak and you could do that twice and then hang them dry make big batches of food and eat it until it is gone i work with these two hairdressers we have this salon now this salon these were good hairdressers one um he was a gay guy and back then there was no like uh rights for gay people and when his his partner died he left him penniless he made him he was very young when they met he made him save fifty dollars a week and so when the older guy died that was all the money he had so he was one hairdresser one came from Tennessee with five kids and one was a drug addict and there and there was me so we were really good um, hairdressers they couldn't couldn't figure out how this salon with this mixed match bunch of uh, hairstylists could make as much money as we did because at that time we had a budget perm for nine bucks and like we'd turn them out very very quick but um, the one guy would make big batches of food like spaghetti or macaroni salad he used to make the best macaroni salad with green peppers and radishes it was very very cheap because he had gone from being very, very well off to, you know, not that well off. And he would make these big batches of food. And so the gal from Tennessee would go over there and eat. And she swore he gave her food poisoning. I go, well, he doesn't have food. <laughs> he's not sick. And she goes, well, he's used to it. Okay. So now I have seven batches of big batches things to make spaghetti beans and cornbread potato salad and chicken hot dogs and chili stew tuna casserole and stir-fry and then a bonus meal of 
soup like chicken noodle or dumplings. And how I would make the dumplings now is I would make biscuits and, and make small pieces of, of biscuit in little, you know, biscuits and throw them in my um, chicken soup. Okay, number five. Now remember, it is not a joke what's coming. Go to the food banks, the pantries, and the churches and get EPT. Call 211 if you need um, if you need utilities, help with your utilities, or if you don't know where to go for food. And, um, and make yourself go and stockpile some food. All right, this is drastic. Get rid of your car and carpool, walk, ride a bus, or take, or, or walk. Um, I didn't ride, I didn't drive for 12 years and I got every, well, I did walk a lot. It's hard to get sympathy from me if you don't have a car because I walked 12 years. Seven, collect, so get rid of your car and you know, save your money for now. Don't get evicted. Unless you can't get to work, then you have to have a car. Collect cans daily and get curbside junk and sell it and cash in your uh, cans. My neighbor, he cashes in his cans. I give him mine, he gets $60 a month. All right, eight. Get a job that lets you eat there. There's jobs that let you eat there. Okay, nursing homes. Uh, when I was a nurse student, if we paid them $3, we could eat there. We could probably eat there for nothing if we wanted to. So nursing homes. If you get a job at the food pantry, they give you food first. And caregiver jobs. Uh, caregiver jobs are good. If you're, if you're like single and you're looking in the direction of homelessness and you provide care, elder care. Also, you know, if you drive elders around. Okay, so eight, get a job that you eat there. A, a lot of times you're welcome to eat at the caregiving jobs, the nursing homes, and the pantries. Nine, like the Salvation Army that provides meals. If you work there, you can eat there. Nine, work as many jobs as possible. That way you're not at home. You're using their utilities and air conditioning and heat. And you're generating more money to save. And it sounds brutal, but this is brutal times, you guys. So, also, um, if you're living in your car, work as much as you can so that the only time you're in your car is when you're sleeping. Uh, uh, caregiver jobs um, are good jobs, like um, a lot hair the living caregiver jobs where you live there three days those pay like nine hundred dollars for three 24-hour shifts which is awful but i would consider that if i lived in my car and then maybe if you had a motor home they would let you where you did the caregiving they would let you live in your motor home there and use the utilities it's dangerous times 10 be outside all day and pack a snack lunch. The only time you're going to be in your home is when you're asleep. You're going to save money. I did that all my life, not on purpose. I just worked a lot. Also, get used to spending as much time now as we can outside. Here we have Lake Marie, Lindo Lake, and go to friends. Okay, I had this friend, and she had a friend. And her friend would like come over and after work until bedtime and she was married too and the friend was single she goes well I'm single and she goes besides your house is nicer and I like it better and the food is better well yeah because I mean you know that's drastic but I it always stuck in my mind and my friend I go well does it get on your nerves she goes it really doesn't because she's my friend Okay, now, let's see how many did I come up with? Ten. What to do if you are evicted. And so it may seem like this brainstorming is screwing around. I told you guys about the story. I was trying to help this guy I knew. 
and he was homeless and it went blah 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 he go no and I go blah 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 this went on for 45 minutes and after 45 minutes it came up in the conversation maybe so and so would let you sleep in the shed you guys that was the solution so the brainstorming works like you're sleeping you're sleeping outside you're homeless and this guy we know will let you sleep in the shed that's a good solution okay now you're about to be evicted rent a garage to live in as opposed to a house it is cheaper you can use a garage as storage while you're sleeping in there so you don't have to pay storage and it's cheaper than an apartment and a lot of times they will let you have a dog now if you're not a terrible tenant and you're paying the person decent and you're paying on time and you're not a pest and your dog is not making a mess the dog provides protection to the house as do you and you know it could work out number two rent a bedroom now my advice is if you rent a room the only thing you want to do is sleep there you want to make sure that nothing causes you to get kicked out of that room so you don't have to sleep in your car so just keep a few clothes there um, also if you can avoid using their bathroom and kitchen that's going to help you out too you can take showers you can find ways so if you are lucky enough to find a cheap bedroom especially do everything you possibly can to hang on to that don't be like using their um, their washer and dryer raiding the um, refrigerator stuff like that just say well I'm lucky I have this bedroom so I'm not on the streets okay now buy like a work van you know the big white ones with the double doors or rent a moving uh, truck and I've seen people living in those you can get away with that for quite a while it's cheaper than an apartment and if you're not obnoxious if you go there late and you leave early you're gonna be able to park those in a, a neighborhood because they look like somebody's work van so what you do is you only sleep in that neighborhood you're parking in when you're asleep and you leave early even those new work vans uh, it is cheaper than an apartment it can be miserable but it can be done okay number four a camper shell you get a little truck with a camper shell and you gotta live in that and then eventually you get a nicer cab over or a bigger truck and then you get a small trailer with a cheap space rent and then you get a fifth wheel and you find somewhere cheap to uh, park it like out there where the fires are you can park them cheap and the good thing is you can pull them out of there if a fire is coming so you're starting out with like um, a little camper shell you know those little camper shells on the back of trucks okay live somewhere cheaper number six like where like Mexico also you can do a search and find cheap places to live where they actually just have I was searching out this one town and you can actually rent an apartment for $450 a month. That's not even going to get you a driveway here. Also, Mexico is very cheap. It's not entirely without risk. But um, quite a few people do it here in San Diego. Get Section 8 housing. Okay, you cannot find a section 8 house in San Diego but if you get section 8 I mean I've actually known some people who have done it but you can take your section 8 anywhere so like if you got your section 8 and you went to one of these cheap places and they got your section 8 that might just work out for a while until you can get back on your feet 8 Park in back of where you work. Okay, I knew 
It was my friend's husband. And he went to Hawaii, and all day long he was at the beach, and then he arranged where he worked that he could park in the back when he slept. So same thing, you go there late to sleep, and you leave early, and you go to work. And the rest of the time you're at the beach. And he had seven clothes, seven cans of food, and uh, he lived that way quite a while. He got his clothes at the thrift store. Uh, he also like met friends and you know slept out on their couches for a while until you know. So uh, consider um, parking in back of where you work. Okay. Stay at the beach park and shopping centers or anywhere you can go, Lake Murray, Lindo Lake, anywhere you can go, and then sleep at the homeless shelters, which would be bad, but it's better than homeless. Although uh, they might have some no drugs thing, I'm not sure. Okay, number 10, sleep on a friend's couch, but provide some kind of benefit to the friend okay i was at the food pantry and i met up with this young girl and she seemed pretty good at this what she did was she came from oregon she had a car and she was sleeping on her friend's couch and she got food at the pantry the one i told you about that gives lots of food and so then her friend had food as well you know the guy I told you about the guy who went to the park, he was starving and he went to the park and got a sandwich and uh, it was either a small salad, an apple, or a Coke. He seemed totally incapable of cooperating with this guy who let him sleep inside of the door. I mean, it was better than homeless, but probably both of them were nearly starving. So the ability to cooperate, like the last video, the co-op thing, is key to living better. And why wouldn't you want to help the person who was letting you sleep on their floor? It's better than sleeping outside. So you could babysit for the person, you could give them uh, food, or you could do like yard work, housework. I mean, anything you could do to be helpful until you could find a job. You could collect cans all, all darn day long, and you could, um, you know, you could uh, do, what is it called, um, recycling, and you could give them half of the money because you're really grateful you don't have to sleep on the floor. Stuff like that. So that's my 10 tips. Uh, if you guys have any good tips, if you would leave them under the uh, comment, you have no idea who um, reads my uh, comments. You could really help someone. Uh, quite a few of my followers were uh, living in their cars. It's better than being homeless, you guys. Start out with your car and learn how you can do it and then try to get a van and a little trailer and a fifth wheel. Okay, you guys, please like, comment, and subscribe, and God bless you all.